Hi friends, today we're going to learn how to draw a cottage. This is going to be so much fun. I'm so excited. So for this drawing, we're going to need the colors blue, green, red, pink, yellow, and green. A couple shades of green. So let's get started. So we're going to draw one of the coolest cottages or houses. Um, and why don't we start off by drawing this white picket fence in front of the house. Have you ever seen this kind of fence before? This kind of lattice or this picket um, fence? I guess it's not a lattice fence. It's called a picket fence. Um, there, it's a cute little fence that some people have around their house. Um, so we're going to draw this white picket fence. Let's see, what can I teach you about fences? Did you know that there are different types of fences? So you've got a picket fence, like this little fence that we're drawing here, where it's kind of decorative, where it's not so much for security and being safe as it is to look nice um, and to keep little animals in maybe, like your doggy or your cat. Um, and then there's fences that are solid wooden fences that are you know, five or six feet tall. And then there's these vinyl fences that are often four or six feet tall, and they're solid white plastic fences. Besides that, you also have these metal chain-linked fences, um, and a metal chain-link fence could be four feet, could be six feet. They're very strong. Um, you can see through them, but they're very strong. Sometimes they're pokey on the top. Sometimes they're not pokey on the top. So, um, but what we're drawing here is a white, uh, little cute picket fence. So we, we drew these boards going up, sticking into the ground. And then in between the boards, we're going to draw um, a piece of wood that, that holds, uh, these pieces of wood hold the fence together. So they connect the fence together. So we're going to draw the fence, this white picket fence. There we go. This is great, making progress on this white picket fence. Wonderful. There we go. One, two, here we go. All right, let's see. How many pieces of the fence do we have? How many tall pieces? Can you count with me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven pieces. Um, and then you have the two pieces between each of these 11 pieces. All right, what should we color next? We can color some big billowy bushes behind the fence. And we can later call, color these in green. So this is a pretty cottage, a pretty house. Not only does it have a white picket fence, but also around the house, there's all these green bushes with these rose flowers. So these circles here that we're drawing here, these uh, spirals shaped, those are the, the roses or the flowers. So we're going to draw those roses on these bushes. There we go. Wonderful. And draw another rose there and another rose here in between the fence. You can see the roses. Did you know that rose bushes often have dozens or even hundreds of flowers on one bush? When they're in bloom and they have lots of roses, it's amazing how many how many flowers and roses they can have. Did you know that roses on the stems or on the branches are often pokey? So you have to be careful that you don't get cut or they don't get poked by by these pokies on the rose bush because it could could really hurt you. So you have to be careful with that. So we're going to draw in these roses. Let's see, how many roses do we have so far? On the first bush on the left, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven roses. On the next bush in the middle, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine roses. And now we're drawing one, two, three, four, five, six roses. And on that rose bush. And now let's draw the roses on one other bush. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
and seven. So we have a lot of roses there. Did you know that rose petals, the um, the the like leaves or the 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 flowers on top of a rose, those petals, um, did you know that some of them can be eaten? Uh, isn't that interesting? And they're very rich. They have a lot of vitamin C, like oranges. You know how oranges have a lot of vitamin C? I think rose petals have even more vitamin C. In fact, I've once had, I think, some sort of supplement, which was like rose petals, like crushed rose petals. And it was like to give you vitamin C, I think. Uh, I'm pretty sure I had that once. Anyway, it's kind of interesting, huh? In fact, there's some kinds of teas that people can make where they where they cook flowers in water and then they add a little sugar and it makes kind of this like soup or this tea that some people drink and that's kind of interesting as well um all right so we're gonna we're gonna color these windows here and you can see that there's um the window frame it has a piece of wood going vertical and horizontal going up and and sideways up and down and sideways and that's to reinforce the glass so that the windows won't break if there's lots of wind or if something hits the window it's to help make it a little stronger because windows can break pretty easily if you're not gentle with them all right well this is fun we're drawing this cottage house and we're going to draw a chimney here there we go we've got our chimney we're drawing some some smoke coming out of the chimney and that could happen if you're if you're cooking something inside like maybe they're cooking homemade bread in this this hearth or in this um this oven that has a chimney uh, an old school oven uh we'll draw the sun over here and we'll draw some clouds around the sun it's a nice sunny day with a few clouds in the sky there we go. We'll draw a cloud over here on the right side of the picture. And draw another one over here. So what can we learn about next? We could learn about bushes, or we could learn about the fence, or we could learn about the, the grass. I could tell you a story, but it might be a little scary. I don't know if I should tell it. So when I was um, a bigger boy, when I was a teenager, I was in baseball and I actually learned how to walk on top of a fence. You shouldn't do this because it's dangerous, but um, the, there were special fences um, at the baseball field where there was this plastic round um, protector on top of the fence that would make it so it wouldn't be pokey on top. And I one time, I think I walked across the entire um, fence without falling down and that's kind of crazy though you don't want to do that because one it could hurt the fence and two you could actually get really hurt if you fall down so that's not a good idea don't follow my example of that but that's just kind of a crazy story that I thought about when I was thinking about fences so let's color in this cottage house with this light pink color there we go maybe this is grandma's house doesn't it look like it could be grandma or grandpa's house and um, we'll color in this cottage house and there we go and let's see what else can I tell you about maybe I can tell you about different types of houses so did you know so there's there's um, houses made out of brick there's houses made out of wood you've got log cabins like cabins look like they're just kind of made of trees stacked on top of each other um, you've got cottages which are kind of like these nice kind of cute um, cute houses that like grandparents often live in um, with a cute backyard and and bushes and things like that and then you've got um, you've got sheds that's another kind of building um, or, or a barn um, when I grew up, that we had a house that had a big barn attached to it. And it looked like the house, except for there was a dirt floor, and it used to have horses in it, and um, it wasn't quite as finished as the house. It was more meant to store um, 
things like lawnmowers and uh, animals and um, stuff like that. So it was a little bit more dirty and there's there was spiders and stuff in it, but that's another kind of building or structure. It's called a barn. So you've got sheds, you've got barns, you've got houses, you've got cottages, you have, so this is a cottage that we're drawing. You have also um, cabins. Um, some people, so let me tell you a story. This is kind of interesting. I met a lady who lives, who lived growing up on a boat. Can you imagine living on a boat in the ocean? Um, so yeah, some people actually do that, where they, they have their food on the boat, they, uh, they go swimming in the ocean every day, they, they cook, they, they read books on their boat, and they'll travel to sometimes different countries in the Caribbean or um, places around Florida, and they'll meet all these people from around the world. And one time, my friend who, who lived on a boat with her family, um, there was a big storm one day, and it was really scary because they didn't know if they would be safe or not. And there was big waves that were like more than 10 feet tall. And they were on this boat, which was pretty big, but it wasn't super big. And they weren't sure if they were going to make it. And they had to climb up the mast while it was raining and and blowing wind and it was dark outside. And they had to pull down the, um, the big piece of cloth um, so that the boat wouldn't capsize, wouldn't tip over. And they all had to like put on things so that um, they would stay on the boat and wouldn't fall off the boat. It was really scary. But the good news is, is that they were all okay. So... That's just kind of interesting. Not many people live on boats. Most people, I'd say, live in houses or apartments. An apartment's like a house that you pay someone each month to live in. Um, you rent an apartment. There's another kind of house called a condo or a condominium. So a condo is uh, where some people live, where it's like an apartment that you can buy. So you can own your apartment. Um, it's kind of like a glorified apartment house, kind of, something like that. <laughs> so let's color in the grass here. We've got all these um, blades of grass that are sticking up out of the ground. We'll color those in. There we go. Color all of these in. Color in this grass. We've got red roses and pink roses. We have one uh, well, we have two pink rose bushes and then two red rose bushes. And then we've got this lime green colored grass. Did you know that there are different types of grass? Some grass is more green than others. Some grass is more blue. Um, there's some grasses that are thicker or are more pokey than other grasses. Some grasses are more soft and slender and bendy. Um, and there's some grasses that might be even a little bit itchy. There's all sorts of different types of grasses. One time I was in Florida and I played on the grass and I swear it felt like it was like an itchy grass. It was really kind of weird. It could have been the bugs. It could have been that there were chiggers in the grass. These little bugs that, that kind of bite you or, or get on you like mosquitoes kind of. Um, or it could have actually been the grass itself had a little... Um, itchy stuff on it. So let's um, now draw in between this um, this pretty uh, white fence here. All right. Got this cute fence out front. We're, we're coloring it in with this green here. Uh-huh. Okay, let's see. What do we want to talk about next? So while we're coloring in this bush, why don't we talk about something else? We could talk about um, the sky and clouds and the sun. Um, let me teach you something. This might be something you've never learned ever before. So do you know why sometimes it gets hotter and colder outside? So why it, um, why seasons happen like winter why winter happens and then why spring and summer happen. 
And if you live in a part of the world where those don't happen, do you know why it's just warm all the time or cold all year round? So I could teach you that. So the earth is like a big ball that's spinning in space. And we live in different parts on this big ball, on the earth, on this sphere, this globe. Um, if you live near the middle of the ball, the middle of the earth, that's called the equator. Can you say equator? So the equator is kind of towards the middle of the earth. So places like Hawaii that are always warm, they're a little closer to the equator than other places. So if you live right on the equator, it means that it's likely to be hot all year round and you don't ever have a winter. You just have maybe a rainy season and a dry season and it's really hot outside, like all the time. Um, but if you live far away from the equator, like if you live kind of like in, um, in the United States, um, or in Argentina, then you're, you're likely to experience different seasons where um, in some seasons it's cold and in other seasons it's warm. Um, and that's because the earth, um, it goes around, uh, it kind of spins around and different parts of the earth get more um, sunlight at certain times of the year. So the earth rotates once every day. It does one spin in 24 hours or one spin a day. But while it's spinning, it also goes in a big oval um, around the sun. And it revolves around the sun one time every year. And when it goes to one part of the sun, a certain part of the earth is closer to the sun and gets more sunlight and it becomes warmer on that part of the earth. At another part of the year, it has less light coming from the sun um, and it gets colder. Um, and that's also why sometimes the days are longer and sometimes the days are shorter. It's because sometimes um, the earth and how it's positioned where it is around the sun changes. So that's what causes seasons. That's what makes it more hot during certain seasons like summer and spring and colder in fall and fall, fall and winter. That's what makes the days longer or shorter. In fact, did you know in the winter time in um, like Alaska or right near the, the North Pole, it actually gets dark for almost all day long. Like you'll wake up at 10 in the morning and it would still be dark. And then you'd go to bed and it would still be dark. But then in the summertime, in places like that, it's light almost all the time. So you'll be in Alaska and it will be light at four in the morning and you'll go to bed at 11 at night and then it would still be light. Of course, you wouldn't want to go to bed at 11 at night. That would probably be a little bit hard on your parents. You should go to bed whenever they ask you to go to bed, um, even if that's a lot earlier than that. So that's some interesting facts about, about seasons and about what makes days longer and shorter. It all has to do with how the earth rotates and revolves around the sun. It goes around the sun and where the earth is and how it's tilted helps change the weather and make it warmer cold outside. And do you know if if things if we lived too close to the sun, it would actually be a really, really hot. If we lived too far away from the sun uh, on the earth, it would be really, really cold. But we're really, really blessed because the sun and the earth were created to be just the right distance from each other to make it so that we can live on it. So it's really quite a miracle that that happened, that the earth and the sun were created in such a way as to support life. Um, so we should feel very, very blessed. Um, which brings me to another idea. So do you know a one way to be very happy no matter what? So let's say um, 
you know, this trick will help you be happy even if you can't get what you want. So let's say you want chocolate candy, but you can't have it because your mommy or your daddy say we don't have any or not right now because that's too much sugar. You can still be very, very happy despite that. If it's cold and wet outside, you can be happy. If someone says something mean to you, you might feel sad, but you can still choose to be happy. I'm going to share with you a very important special trick. It begins with G, starts with gra, and ends with tattooed. Gra, and ends with tattooed. Gratitude. Do you know what gratitude means? It means saying thank you a lot and being grateful and thankful for all your blessings. So counting your blessings. So for example, um, being thankful, you can go to your mommy and your daddy and say, hey, thank you for being so nice to me or for being my mommy and daddy. When you say thank you, it makes not only them feel happy, it makes you feel happy. And when they give you food in the morning, let's say they give you some oatmeal or some pancakes or some cereal and milk, you can say, thank you, mommy. Thank you, daddy, for that. That's very nice of you. And when you say that, it makes you happy and it makes them happy. So that's one of the tricks. One of the keys to being happy is to say thank you a lot. And the more you say thank you, um, the happier you'll be, almost guaranteed. Because the more you think about what you don't have, it can make you more sad and feel kind of self-centered. But the more you think about others and, and count your blessings and say thank you for whatever you have, the more you appreciate what you have and, and usually the more good things happen in your life. So it's always a good rule of thumb that anytime anyone does anything nice for you, you should say thank you. So if someone opens the door for you, you can say thank you. If someone gives you a piece of food and shares with you, you can say thank you. If someone um, plays with you and at, when you're at the park, you can say thanks for playing with me. It's nice to meet you. Um, if your mommy or your daddy give you a hug, you can say thank you. If they say, I love you, you can say, I love you too. Thanks for telling me. That makes me feel happy. So that is a trick. No matter what the weather is outside, you can still be happy. All you've got to do is say thank you. So now we're getting pretty close to finishing this drawing picture. Just to hold on just a little bit and we'll finish coloring it in. But while we're doing that, I just want to give you a challenge. I want to invite you to do something positive today. I want to invite you, after we're done coloring this picture, to go to your mommy or your daddy and say thank you for letting me watch this video. I'm learning a lot of things and it's helping me to be a good person. Thank you. Um, you can say thank you for being my mommy and daddy. Thank you for being kind to me and for buying me food and for taking care of me. I love you. So that's my challenge. I dare you to go to your mommy and daddy right now and go give them a hug and, and tell them thank you and I love you. And then you can come right back and, and watch another drawing video where we learn how to draw something else. But if you go do that, it's going to make you feel happy and it's going to make your parents very happy. And if you say nice things like that and give them hugs, it's going to make them want to let you watch more videos because um, they want you to grow and learn good values and they want you to learn good information. And um, if, if you watch something and then you're very nice to people afterwards, they'll be more apt, more likely to let you watch more. But if you watch something and then you get really angry at them, then they might not let you watch as much because, because they want you to grow up well and to be happy. And if they have you watch something that teaches you not to be as nice, then, then they might not let you do that anymore. So I just, I invite you, you should go up to your mommy or your daddy or your brother or sister 
give them a hug and a kiss. If you have a baby brother or baby sister, you could go up to them and give them a kiss on the forehead and say, I love you. Well, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed learning how to draw this cottage house. And you should join us tomorrow because we have new videos every day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Hi friends, today we're going to learn how to draw a church building. For this, you're going to need markers that are blue, yellow, green, red, and brown. All right, I'm excited. Let's jump in. So, first off, we're going to draw the top of the building. We're going to draw a little steeple going up towards the middle and then back down. So there's our roof. Now we're going to draw the roof, give it a little thickness so it kind of looks like a bent rectangle. Now we're going to draw down on the walls and on the ground. Next up, we're going to draw the door. It goes over and around. It's actually a double door. So there's two doors. You need to draw two handles, little ovals there. Now we're going to draw lines going across. We're drawing the bricks. There's going to be a lot, a lot of bricks on this church building. One time my wife and I, we were outside and we saw this big building made out of bricks. And we sat there, we counted how many bricks there were tall and how many bricks across. And I can't remember how many there were, but I think there were tens of thousands of bricks. So on a building like a church, if it's a red brick building, it has a lot of bricks, probably in the thousands or tens of thousands of bricks if it's a big building. So you, you draw all of these rectangles. They're kind of like squares, but one side is a little longer than the other. Draw another line here. Let's keep on going up. You can see you have the lines kind of going in the middle, um, kind of alternating. The bricks look like they're kind of alternating. And that makes them more secure. If the bricks are alternating, it makes it less likely that the building will fall down if they're shaking. If they're all just stacked directly on top of each other without being interlinked as much and overlaid, like that, then they might not stay as sturdy. And you know what they actually put bef between bricks? They'll actually put this sort of um, cement uh, in between the bricks, and it's kind of like a glue, like a like a rock glue that that sticks the um, one brick to another brick. And when they all get stuck together, and they add that to the weight of the bricks, it can get pretty strong. So it's just Strengthen that line there on the edge. Now draw more bricks. Look at how many bricks there are on this building. It looks like there's going to be about a hundred or so bricks. We already have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're we're drawing the tenth row right now, and each row looks like it has about ten bricks. So there's about a hundred bricks, hundred rectangles that we've drawn so far. So we'll just keep on drawing. One thing that's nice about this is you get so much practice drawing rectangles that it gives you plenty of time to practice and get better at it. Well, we're almost there, we're going to the top of the building, all the way to the roof. When I was young, I would go to a church where there was red bricks as well outside in New Hampshire. And we'd play all around outside, and it was really, really fun. All right, there we go. It looks like we've got the bricks set and drawn for our how to draw a house, or a, a church house. Now let's draw a path. There we go, just from right where the doors start. And let's see what else we need to draw. Maybe we can draw some bushes. Lots of church buildings have big bushes nearby. So we've got some grass, we've got a path, we've got bushes. I'm gonna draw a tree now. 
got these two branches here. Now we're gonna draw the tree. Oh, this is starting to look nice. All right, now let's draw over here. We could draw a sun. Hey, that's a good idea. And then draw a cloud. There we go. So we've got trees, we've got clouds, we have a sun, we've got bushes, we have a path, and we have this church building that we're drawing. All right, so now's the fun part. We're gonna start coloring. So we've got this green marker, and now we're going to start coloring in the grass with this bright green marker. I really like the bright green color. It really, really stands out. It's very bright and happy. Um, so I'll just color in all of this grass really quickly. As you can see, we're coloring it um, with horizontal strokes, kind of all parallel with each other, but you can color it however you want to. You can color in even little blades of grass if you want to, um, to show show the grass, or you can do it with circles, that might be kind of funny, or you can do it with uh, just like we're doing it. So there we go. We have the um to the left of the path going to the church we've got all of that grass colored in now we need to color in the grass on the other side of the church there we go it's working out pretty well just keep on coloring it and making progress just keep on coloring right to the edge of the paper. That is very green. Okay. Well, let's see. What else do we need to color? We need to color the bushes and uh, the sun, the tree, and the church building. What should we color next? Yeah, let's see. How about we we'll color the path? We'll color it gray. The path, well, it will be a cement pathway going right to the church doors. It will be cement pathway because that way it won't get as muddy when it rains and that way they won't track in mud into the building. So that's, that's why we're gonna do this cement walkway going right to the church building. Now we still need to color in the red bricks and the church doors and the bushes and the sky. Wonder what color we should color all of those. I think red would be good for the bricks. So why don't we start coloring the bricks red? So we'll color in all the bricks. There we go. There's one brick. This might take a little while because there's a lot of bricks, but we can do it. Just color, 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 color. And maybe I'll speed this up for you. So you don't have to so watch every little bit. I'll speed it up. All right, now that we have all of the red bricks colored in, it's time to color in the doors. So we're gonna make these brown wooden doors. So we're gonna color in these, these doors with this brown, dark brown color. Wooden doors are fun. Metal doors are sometimes heavy and not inviting, but wooden, door, wooden doors are a lot more inviting and they're and they make loud noise when you knock on them, especially if you knock right on the on the top middle part. It makes quite a loud noise. All right, so we'll color in this door. There we go. All right, what to color next? Why don't we color in this steeple? This is a really thick, big pillar. It's called a steeple. It could be like a bell tower or something like that. We're gonna color this in brown. Let's color it in. 
Make sure we stay within those black lines of the shape. Try not to color outside of them, but it's okay if we accidentally color outside of them. The biggest part of coloring and learning to color and draw is to have fun. All right, let's color in those handles. We'll make them a different color. Um, kind of looks like a light brown color. We'll also color in the roof, the edge of the roof, make it this nice light brown color. There we go. Color it all in. Hey, that looks like quite the nice church building. Now we just need to color in the background. We need to make the background nice and colorful. Have a, a tree and, and the sky and the sun, and that'll be great. All right, let's color in this bush with this bright bluish green color. All right, we just finished coloring in the bushes to make them a nice green color. So now let's color in the tree trunk. So for that, we're going to color it with a brown marker. There we go. It's a nice smooth looking tree trunk, a tree trunk with smooth bark. That bark is what's the brown stuff on the tree. That helps keep the tree safe from, um, from getting diseases and from getting too cold, from getting uh, scratches, from getting hurt from uh, the weather. That, uh, that bark on the tree really keeps the tree safe. Underneath the bark is the wood, which is a lot more sensitive and can get hurt if it's exposed to the weather. So we just colored the tree, doing great. And now what should we color? Should we color the sun? Or how about the leaves on the tree? Here we go. Let's color in the tree. And I'm not going, we're not coloring these leaves individually. But there's no reason you couldn't do that if you wanted to. We're just kind of coloring them all together. One solid color. Just to keep it simple. All right, about halfway done coloring this tree. Look at that. Did you know that tree leaves come in all different types of colors? There are trees that are have green leaves, but around the fall or the autumn time, a lot of tree leaves change their color and they become yellow or red or brown. Um, but a lot of leaves start off being green. Green's kind of the most common color I've seen for leaves. So we'll color that in. And the leaves actually help give energy from the sun to the tree. It's really neat what leaves can do. They're really little, little factories producing energy for the tree. So we'll color this in. There we go. Wonderful. Now, next up, what should we color? We can color the sky blue. We could color the sun yellow. What do you think we should color? Let's see. Hmm. I think we should color the sun yellow. Look at that. That is a bright sun. That is a pretty, pretty yellow sun. Almost tempting to put a smiley face on the sun. You could if you wanted to. There we go. Now, I think we're almost done. We just need to color in the sky. So after we color in the sky, I think we'll be all done.
Well, I think our picture of how to draw a church building is all done. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you'll join us for our next drawing video. We put out a new one every single day. All right, thanks friends. Hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Hi friends, today we're going to learn how to draw a home. This is going to be so much fun, I'm excited. So for this drawing, we need to have markers red, yellow, green, blue, and purple, and brown. So, let's get started. So first off, we're going to draw the outline for the house. We'll draw the wall, draw across, draw down. Then go across the bottom. There we go. We've got this kind of rectangle. Almost looks like a square. Then draw a rectangle for the door. And put a little circle for the, for the doorknob. Now we're drawing the roof. There we go. It looks like a triangle. All right. We'll draw a couple squares for the windows. There we go. Another square over here. Hey, that house almost looks like a smiley face. Well, not smiling, but the door kind of looks like a mouth and the, the windows kind of look like eyes. So we're going to have little little gutters or little um, siding there at the bottom of the roof. Now, let's see. What should we color? We can color in how about a chimney? So a chimney is usually made out of bricks and that's where smoke comes out so if you're cooking something in the chimney or if you put wood in the fire in the chimney that's where all the smoke leaves we'll draw a circle here for the sun there we go got the sun here oh a smiley face sun and we'll draw some fluffy clouds there we go we'll draw one cloud there we'll draw another cloud over here Wonderful. Add a little smiley face. Make it happy clouds. Wonderful. Well, now what should we color? How about we'll color some bushes? A bush right over there and a bush right over here on the left side of the house. Draw a little path, a walkway to walk up to the door and knock. And we'll draw a line across horizontally and that will be the grass. We'll draw a tree. There we go. It's all fluffy. Perfect. And we will draw another tree over here. There we go. We have two trees, two bushes, two windows, two clouds, and only one sun, and one door, and one chimney. All right. Let's color the house in red. So, let me teach you something about houses. Did you know that houses on their outside, they, they usually have either plastic or wood siding or metal? Um, I'd say a lot of houses have this vinyl plastic siding. Um, also, a lot of houses have bricks for their siding. So this could be a red brick house or this could be a vinyl house that has red vinyl or plastic. So we'll color this red. There we go. Um, there we go. We'll just color this in. Ooh, that's fun. Um, so what's your favorite color? Do you have a favorite color? I really like the color blue and yellow and white. What color do you like the most? Do you like green? or red, or orange, or blue, or black, or purple. We're actually going to color the trees purple later on, and that's going to be silly. I think you'll like that. So we'll keep on coloring this house. We're about halfway done. Good job. OK. And let me teach you about something else that we see in the house. So did you know that windows have see those two lines going across the window like across those two that reinforces the window and makes it stronger so that if winds blow the window doesn't break all right we're going to finish up drawing this 
siding of the house. Did you know that there's people whose job it is to put on siding of houses? All right, what should we color next? We could color the door. We could color the bushes. We could color the tree. Let's color the door a bright yellow. This is a colorful house. I don't know too many people who have bright yellow doors and red siding, but this house has character. So we're going to have it be red uh, with a yellow door. Um, maybe, maybe it was painted with like pineapple juice or something or lemon juice. That'd be silly, huh? Okay, so we'll color in the door. There we go. Let's see. What else do we want to color now? We could color a bush or a tree. Let's color this blue. Oh yeah, look at that blue. I love the color blue. We'll color the roof blue. Do you know that roofs, do you know why they're pointed? Why they're not just flat? It's because when it rains or snows, uh, a roof that's slanted at an angle, that's kind of like a triangle, it helps the water and the snow to fall off of the roof. Because if the, the roof is flat and um, there's a lot of snow on it, it could collapse. A triangle is also very strong. So um, the roofs are very strong when they're triangles. So I think that's one of the reasons why lots of roofs are kind of pointed at the top and not just flat. Well, all right, uh, what should we color now? We just colored the roof blue. Um, we could color the trees in now, or um, let's color this little, this little lining here. Let's color that green. That's where gutters would go. Uh, it kind of looks like a colorful gutter. We'll also color the chimney green. This is a really funny house. How many chimneys would be green? Um, so let's see, what should we color now? We could color the sky blue. We could color the trees green. How about we'll color in the windows, this light blue color. There we go. Do you know that windows are made out of glass? And did you know how glass is made? So glass is made by melting sand and and things like that. Pretty interesting, huh? All right, let's color these bushes. When I grew up, we had a lot of bushes around our house. Our house kind of looked like this house, except for it was blue instead of red. And on the bush, there were all these red berries. The red berries, though, on the bush around our house, I think they were poisonous. They weren't edible berries. They weren't like raspberries or or uh, strawberries or blueberries. Um, they were this kind of different berry that sometimes insects would eat or little birds would eat, but they weren't okay to be eaten by people. Um, yeah, we had this 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 bush. It was kind of fun. It went all the way around our house. It was kind of like a fortress or like a big wall, like the wall of China. But it was, it were these these bushes that were probably about five feet tall, about as tall as an adult. Um, and they would give us a little privacy and be kind of like having a fence, but it was a lot more natural and pretty. So now let's color the tree in green. We're just going to color all green. We're not going to worry about coloring the individual leaves. We're going to color them all together. Um, did you know that a lot of plants are green? And one of the reasons that they're green is because of a process called photosynthesis. The green stuff in plants helps plants to get the sunlight and turn it into energy for the tree, for the plant. And then the roots go down into the soil, into the dirt, and they kind of suck up um, nutrients from the soil, like, like food. They kind of use the roots kind of like a straw down into the into the ground to suck up the nutrients that help get give the plants food. So we'll keep on coloring this tree. There we go. What should we color now? We could color the tree trunks or the sky or the sun. 
Let's color the door handle blue. We could also color the path right in front of the house. That'd be that'd be a good idea. Um, all right, let's see. What do we want to color now? Let's color the tree trunks. We're going to color the tree trunks purple. I doubt you'll ever see a tree with a purple trunk. But for this drawing, one of the most important things of drawing is having fun. So we're going to have this uh, drawing of a house or drawing of a home have purple trees. <laughs> I've seen brown trees, I've also seen white trees, or light brown or dark brown trees, but I don't think I've ever seen a purple tree. I might have seen a green tree that had moss growing on it, but a purple tree, that would be something else to see that. Let's color in the grass. So we'll color the grass this light green. Um, did you know that there are different kinds of grasses. Some grasses are soft, others are more thick. Um, some are darker green, others are more bluish. Um, and uh, yeah, I love playing with grass though. It's so nice to have grass outside. I went to a country called Argentina where there, was, there wasn't as much grass as where I grew up and it was just dirt outside and when it got windy, there was dirt flying all over the place. It would get in our eyes and on our clothes and on our face. So when we'd wash our face off, when we'd come inside, there'd be dirt on our face and on our shirt collars and so forth. Um, so it's really nice to have grass to hold down the dirt so it doesn't fly around everywhere. Grass is also soft, so if you fall down, it's nice to fall on grass and not just hard rocks and dirt. We'll color the sun in now. Did you know that the sun is really, really big? So the sun is actually s bigger than the entire world. So this house is really, really small compared to the sun. Even though in the picture the sun looks smaller than the house, that's because the sun is so far away from the house. If we were closer to the sun, that we'd see that it was really, really big. Um, the sun is super duper hot. Um, in fact, if there weren't the sun there, we wouldn't be able to live. It would be too, too cold um, outside. And if the sun were a little bit closer to Earth, it would be too hot for us to live here. But the sun's just the right distance away from the earth so that it's not too hot and not too cold. It's just right for us to be able to live on earth. All right, so let's color the sky this light blue. Blue is one of my favorite colors. I really like it. It just seems so relaxing to look at it. Did you, In fact, did you know that certain colors, different colors make you feel different ways. So, for example, blue is a color that often makes people feel relaxed. Um, red is kind of a more intense color. Um, I'm not an expert on what all the colors make people feel, but I know that blue helps people feel relaxed and to feel like they trust. Um, so that's just kind of interesting that colors actually affect um, not just the color, but they also affect how you feel when you see the color. So it's good that outside the sky is blue. So when we go outside on a walk or on a hike, it helps us feel relaxed and happy. If the sky were red all the time, it might make us kind of not as happy and not as relaxed. Um, but, you know, the world has been just created in such a wonderful way. And it, uh, it's really quite marvelous if you think about all the things that were created just the right way. Um, so let's keep on coloring the sky blue. Just color it over. 
Got the smoke coming out of the chimney there. Now, we don't want to have too much smoke going into the air because that causes pollution, which makes the air look gray. And when the air is gray, it doesn't doesn't have as doesn't make you as happy and it's not as healthy to breathe. Um, sometimes though the sky turns different colors like yellow or orange or red, um, especially around sunrise or sunset at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day, the sky will often change colors um, depending on what's happening in the sky in the clouds and the weather. Did you know, okay, here's something that's a little a little tricky, but let's see if you can learn it. Did you know that when it's really clear skies outside, that means it's high pressure outside? And when it's really dark and cloudy and stormy, it means it's low pressure outside. The air pressure is lower when it's stormy and higher when it's really nice and sunny. So that's kind of interesting. You can go and tell your mom and dad that if it's sunny outside, you can say, it's high pressure outside. And they'd be like, what do you mean? You'd be like, well, the air pressure is higher today because it's so sunny. And they'd be really, really surprised. So you should do that. You should be like, it's a high pressure weather. Uh, the air is high pressure today outside. Um, so, and that's actually what causes different kinds of weather and storms. When you have a bunch of low pressure air and high pressure air, it, they, they have to move around and they displace each other and they cause wind and tornadoes and things like that. So, all right. Well, we'll finish coloring in the sky. And I think that we are just about done with coloring. Anyway, I appreciate you um, coloring with us today and I hope you'll join us next time. We have new videos every single day. And we love having you come and color with us. So let's just end by coloring this pathway in brown. And um, we hope to see you next time. Feel free to leave a comment below and to subscribe. All right, thanks. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.